Hello and welcome to my latest weekly video news from Madison's. Well, I now sit here at the beginning of October. The end of the stamp duty holidays has come and um, my colleagues in the conveyancing world and probably anybody in the property world is breathing a bit of a sigh of relief because my, what a run it has been. Of course, there was the two big stamp holiday uh, introduced. The first one introduced back on the 7th of July so that you would pay uh, really uh, no stamp duty up to 500,000 till the end of March. That was then extended to the end of June with a tapering to not pay, spend anything, um, any stamp duty above 250,000 to the end of September. So the market went crazy and lots of talk about uh, did it go crazy because of the stamp duty holiday or other factors. I'll come to that in a second. Um, but about 500,000 people benefited from not paying any stamp duty at all up to the end of June, saving a phenomenal three billion in stamp duty revenue that would normally have been received by HMRC. Um, don't feel too sorry for them though, uh, stamp duty is still paid above 500,000, it gets at really expensive levels, so as the market went boom there were still lots and lots of receipts being paid to um, Her Majesty's Treasury for stamp duty to reflect that real boom in the market and those higher values that were transacting um, and then to the end of September about another 40,000 people didn't pay any stamp duty at all so great saving scene and what are we seeing since then well interestingly this chart here is quite good to look at as a kind of a future of what's the market going to do if you want to save from the stamp duty holiday uh, to the end of September then you really had to be under offer at the beginning of July and as you can see um, this shows that still a good number of sales were getting agreed and the market didn't fall off a cliff at all um, as a result of the enormous demand that there still is and the lack of supply prices are still holding they were down slightly in August, um, they only rose by 0.1%. Um, so slowing a, sh a slight slowing there, but predicted to be around seven to eight percent growth this year, and a lot of that price still holding um, because simply there are too many people chasing too many properties. Um, and I'll talk in a minute about a good um, blog that Rightmove have got about how to make yourself a power buyer, which is what you need to do in this very very competitive market. It's felt there were quite a lot of landlords maybe offloading properties, crystallising on those really high gains, boom of a market, then wanting to cash in on that but overall I think low interest rates um, combined with uh, that continued search for space the government incentives uh, that are being offered 95% mortgages etc um, and a sense that the world is returning to normal should mean that prices will continue to hold and we'll see a buoyant market ahead but just be interested to see what happens with stock levels there's no doubt that many people brought forward their purchasing decisions simply because of that stamp of duty saving you might be interested to know though if you are thinking of moving and you're thinking you want to be in before Christmas you really need to list your property for sale by the 20th of October. Um, NetAgent have done a good bit of research which shows how long it typically takes to sell a property at this time of the market um, and you, yeah you need to be on the market by 20th of October. If you miss this Christmas market then listing in the new year is the fastest time to secure a buyer. So on average 64 days to secure a buyer um, in this autumn market but in the new year that drops to around 40. So you might decide to hang on and take advantage of a much quicker way to get yourself under offer and proceedable. Well of course a lot of the, the delays uh, in actually buying property were caused by that enormous uh, demand on the system uh, that was seen and the pandemic as well. I haven't talked about that very much but we've seen that quite a lot with um, <clears throat> valuations might be booked and you get pinged so the family's got to self-isolate. So all those delays of when you can take out a mortgage valuation, do a building survey, go back for a second visit, were all delaying the time it was taking to chug through to exchange and completion. So interesting, that research is showing much more normal times in terms of ability to get to actual exchange of contracts. Um, so it's slowing down quite heavily. But I did mention that Rightmove have got a good blog on their website all about how to become a power buyer. Um, the biggest thing they cite is you've just got to get yourself into a proceedable position. I would definitely agree with that. Um, certainly be under offer um, or be sat in rented waiting to buy. Um, <clears throat> otherwise you've got to just really hope that the stars align for you and you get a chance to get your property on the market and under offer before the one you've seen goes. So yeah, get yourself proceedable, speak to your mortgage broker as well, really understand what you can borrow and 
get your finance in place so you can evidence your ability to proceed very, very quickly. And the final thing that I would add actually, which isn't on uh, Right Moves blog, they talk about letting your agent know if you're a cash buyer. But the final point that I would mention is just know what you want. Um, as agents, we really get used to seeing the names of people that drop in to see the same properties. And sometimes we think, well, that's completely different to what they saw last week. Start to show that you really are narrowing your search down. It's a sign you're ready to commit, ready to commit to a purchase. And that, as agents, gives us comfort. It ticks your boxes, it's what you've been looking for, and therefore we are predicting a nice, smooth journey to exchange of contracts. So just bear that one in, in mind. Well, if you are thinking that you fancy a bit of an up move in your property search, and how about Robbie Williams' mansion that he has put on the market? Um, it's a magnificent Wiltshire mega, mega, mega mansion. Um, his wife, um, Ada, and him bought it um, for 6.75 million back in 2000. Sorry, it's up for 6.75 million, having they bought it for 2009. Not sure what they paid for it. It's Compton Bassett House, a 71 acre um, country estate with seven bedrooms two star flats and a detached garage cottage and it's got spectacular gardens and grounds and a walled area with a pavilion um, grass football pitch tennis courts even a helicopter hangar and there's a vast leisure complex with a gym indoor swimming pool hot tub steam room and sauna so um, yeah i would thoroughly encourage you to have a look at that one if you've got a cool 6.75 million to spend but if not how about this one in grove avenue it steps away from the high street and the grove park um, it's a beautiful two-bedroom maze in that flat it's got one of the best landscape courtyard gardens that i have ever seen and uh, residents parking for two cars on this private road on a guide price of 500,000. if you'd like to hear more about that do give us a call have a great week and look forward to seeing you next week bye bye